sa re sa 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 re sa 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 re sa 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 ra har re har 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 re har 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 re har 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 ra
from Española, New Mexico. First time I met Sir Singh Stog was in 1976 at Guru Ram Das Ashram. And I'll never forget that moment. Um, I was just really anticipating what this guy was going to be like and what he looked like and all that stuff. And uh, I remember him walking into the room and the first thing I saw to the right was this big robe and two bare feet. I just kind of went up and looked at him walking into the room and he sat down on his, his bench there and taught class and he put us into meditation. Um, and the, the place was packed, yeah. probably hundred people there. And after all of us had our eyes closed, I opened my eyes to see what he was doing. And much to my surprise, when I opened my eyes to look at him, he was looking directly at me. And it kind of uh, startled me and I got nervous and I, and he looked at me and he started playing like a guitar in front of me. So then I got nervous and I closed my eyes again for another 10 or 15 minutes. And I opened my eyes again to see what he was doing. And he was looking right at me again, playing the same guitar. So I then, looked at him and said, I pointed at him and saying, are you looking at me? And I was <laughs> looking around like, <laughs> he doesn't know me. How does he know this stuff? He doesn't know you play a guitar. He doesn't know I play guitar, right? I mean, doesn't know. Right, right. Doesn't. <laughs> so after class was over, we were all gathered out in front of the ashram. And he approached me and said, don't ever come to class again without your guitar. I want you sitting up by me, leading the chanting for my class. So I was blessed for four years to sit right there with him. And uh, he'd have me play Livtar songs and Flowers in the Rain and chanting Guru Ram Dass chants. And it was four amazing years in my life, for sure. And I got to hear the Sangat come together and all of our voices got stronger and we started to harmonize and we just created this real, really beautiful music um, together for his class. And so one night he had one of the secretaries read a translation of a Guru Gobind Singh Shabbat, that Aman the Joga come out. And it was read in English and everyone was like, whoa, we've never heard a Shabbat like this. It was so beautiful. The demons and demigods and their chariots and the whole world will be astonished at your beauty and grandeur. So after the poem is read, and it was done by a Punjabi guy, I think, the translation, he hands the paper to me and says, and this is for you. He said, put it to music. That was on a Thursday. He said, have it finished by Monday class. <laughs> You're thinking, that yeah, was that enough time? So I worked on it real hard that weekend and I found I thought a pretty good tune. And it was the first time I had ever put my own music to a song. So it was my first go with that. And so. <laughs> So it started off like this. Oh my mind, practice yoga in this way. Oh my mind, practice yoga in this way. Truth be your horn, make sincerity a necklace, and apply meditation as ashes on your body. Make self-restraint your ear and numb an element to your arms. 
So I played that for him on Monday that night and he seemed to really like it. And he said, okay, now put the Gurmukhi to it. He said, sing the Gurmukhi first and then sing the English. So I went home that night and put that to music and it went. Rajay Paramakadu Pata Haraku Upajara Kasana By the sons of God Divine knowledge will come to you And waves of melody And exquisite measure shall be produced Chaka Chaka Rahe Deva Dhanam Chaka Chaka Biyom Divanam The demons and demigods in their chariots The silent sages intoxicated with delight. Grayman, they bid the joker come out. Grayman, they bid the joker come out. Instruct your soul to don the garb of self-restraint and to meditate on God's name without speaking. So shall your body ever remain like gold and death can never approach you. So once we put that to music, um, he later said that this is the way to do Gurmani Kirtan because you need to be able to choreograph in your mind what the Gurbani is saying. And he said the only reasonable way to do it is to sing it. He says talking won't do it and reading it won't do it either. And forget about translating it in your mind, that's not gonna work, practically speaking. So that was his medicine for the Aquarian age, just to do Gurbani with Gurmukhi and sing it and translate. So that was my destiny to do that part. So that's me story. So <clears throat> since it's summer solstice celebration, I wanted to tell that story of our first 3HO summer solstice, which was in 1970. And um, we had gotten some land from a, uh, one of the local Native American tribes here. Um, 
It was the Santa Clara Canyon. And we, we drove up the road there and there were big, beautiful pine trees and beautiful clear stream. <laughs> and this beautiful long lush grass because most of New Mexico is like the picture you see on the screen. It's dry with scrubby grass. So this place was like heaven. And the altitude was very high, I believe. 8,000 feet, mm -hmm. something. Sounds about right. Eight, 9,000 feet. So the first morning, there was a little snow on us. My tent was a big piece of plastic. <laughs> and I got in a little ditch, a little gully. <laughs> And I spread the plastic, put some rocks, and then I would slide in underneath the plastic. We didn't care how we, if we had tents or anything. And the first thing Yogiji taught If you're not from high altitude, it takes days to adjust to the altitude. So we just got up there. Yogiji comes, he's teaching. He taught everything back then. He taught all the classes. Well, not all of them. We would teach some, but he would teach every day. But what he taught was breathing and especially holding your breath out. So we just came very high altitude. He says, inhale, exhale. And that's the last we heard from him. <laughs> and we're and he just sits there meditating. And finally it seems five minutes. I don't know. It's probably 30 seconds, but probably a minute. I don't know but he really put us through fear of death because holding your breath out makes you face your fear of death. And we did it a lot at that solstice. It just seems like the number one thing to address was fear of death. And then after a couple, two or three days, some people were bathing in the creek with uh, nude. They took off all their clothes and that was not allowed in that campground. And then somebody came and they were dealing drugs out of their car. <laughs> so our, our hosts, the Native Americans said, you guys are out of here. So we got all of the people and it was about 70 cars, I think. 
and uh, we got all lined up on this dirt road that went up to the camp. And then we had to pull out onto the main highway and Yogi Ji went out and stood in the road to block the traffic. Wow. And he had a shawl and he waved the shawl around. Um, and the cars started coming out and he just stood there waving. And one by one, we came out. We were all on this highway, but the highway was only two lanes, one coming and one going. So if you pass a car, you have to wait till no one is coming and then pass. Yogi G pulled out, he went last. He pulled his car out to pass and he passed all 70 cars. And they, we were going over hills, around corners. And he just said, keep going, keep going. Until he got to the front. And to have that knowledge that he knew his death was not on that day. So he didn't care. He was like, whatever, I don't know, whatever's around the corner. It's not the day I'm supposed to die. So... He led us then to another place down in a dry riverbed. And we finished the solstice the last few days there. And we had no food, we had nothing. People from the community would bring us watermelons and I don't even remember. And we made it through just by sticking together and by learning the lessons of not having any fear of death. And that was the first 3HO 1970 summer solstice. Satnam Guru Tej Singh. I'm Guru Tej Singh. Satnam. Welcome to summer solstice. Um, I met Sri Singh Saib in uh, 1970. He, um, I think it was the, the second big Atlanta pop festival. And um, I had been interested in yoga for... Um, a few years, but in those days, you know, now there's a, there's a yoga studio, yoga place on every corner, but in those days, there really wasn't, I mean, it was hard, to, and especially in the South, because I was in Atlanta, Livtar was my first teacher, great teacher. Anyway, um, there, there was no place to learn yoga in those days, but I, dug around and I found some books that had been written in India, but were in English about yoga. And I was teaching myself from those books. So I knew that that wasn't enough. enough and I really needed a teacher. And this is how the power of prayer works. I really prayed. I really prayed that God would, send me or guide me to a teacher and in <clears throat> july of 1970 i went with a bunch of fools to this um rock festival and we all camped out under a big parachute trying to find a place to camp and we had been guided to this place directed to this place and it turned out to be next to what they called 
the yoga tent. So I got excited and it said yoga class, you know, seven in the morning or whatever it was. <clears throat> so I got up early the next morning and went to that class. And they said that Yogi Bhajan was going to speak that night and that I should be there. And I wrote a poem about that experience and I'll read it to you. This is the story of when I started to walk this path of the open hearted at a rock festival is where I began to learn the science of Kundalini and change myself from a spaced out weenie when all I wanted was to hear the band. So I started out with a bunch of fools to rock and roll and break the rules. But by the yoga tent was where we camped. That first morning was a yoga class, which I walked into, but nearly passed. And that experience on my mind was stamped. They said the yogi would speak that night. Our hearts and minds, he would delight. And I should be there to know the truth. I planned to go for that whole day, but then a few drugs got in the way. And when the time came, well, my mind was loose. <laughs> to yoga tent, I made my way to hear what the yogi had to say. But first, there was a yoga class. Now, yoga and drugs don't really mix. And by the end, I was in a fix. My heart and mind were running fast. All my clothes were soaked with sweat. And I was thinking that Tibet was the only place where I could be talked down. Then the yogi began to speak. And I truly began to freak. I'll never forget that. Awesome sound. He said, you've come to lose your fears. I heard with my mind, not my ears. And drugs will destroy your heart and soul. Then my ego screamed into my brain. Run, you fool. Don't bear this pain. So I turned and tried to find a hole. I crawled away on hands and knees to the edge where I could see thousands of nameless people on the strand. And I knew that in that raging sea was not where I was meant to be. The time had come for me to take a stand. Then I understood I had found the door to what I had prayed my whole life for. I had to go back and take it like a man. Then softly, I began to cry as my ego began to die while my tears rolled onto the sand. I turned again and followed the sound back to my little piece of ground. On my hands and knees, I returned. He said, now it's the time to grow. Forget these drugs and let them go. This opportunity you have earned. And in myself, I felt deep peace. For my fears had been released. I had faced myself and seen my soul. So that is how it began for me. That was many long years ago. So I was very fortunate to have worked very closely with City Sing Son. I was his bodyguard and I traveled the world with him. And now it's eight o'clock and I think I have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Schedule's a schedule. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much, Lifter Singh, Guru Shabbat, and Guru Tej, for your wonderful sharing. Um, these uh, three great teachers have been serving this path for many, many years. They served uh, the city since I personally for decades, and they continue to serve. And for all of us to know, they are also running now to the Citizen Saif Corporation Board, and they will keep serving this mission and the legacy in that way. So now you have met them. Uh, we are really honored that they can represent us, and we will be for sure knowing more from them, not only in this seminary, but also in the future uh, in the board. So thank you so much for what you are doing and for your wonderful presentation. Wagyu Jika Kalsa, Wagyu Jika Kalsa, Sadnam.
Sa-sa-sa-de-sa-sa-sa-de-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa-sa